If you had a Nintendo DS growing up, chances are high that you also owned New Super Mario Bros. And if you were like me, you probably played the hell out of that cart. And although it took me weeks and months to beat the game as a kid, today we're gonna check out the speedrun for New Super Mario Bros. and see how runners have been able to beat the game in close to only 22 minutes. Alright, so here we're checking out the any% percent category of speedrunning this game, that meaning getting to the end of the game as quickly as possible by any means necessary, and specifically here some more beginner friendly strats that I'm sure many of you could try out too. So time for the speedrun starts as soon as we start a new save file and are forced to watch the opening cutscene. Yeah, unfortunately you can't skip this cutscene, so while it's going on for about 30 seconds, you can take a nap, eat a sandwich, click the like button on a cool YouTube video, whatever. Anyways, we finally start things off with World 1-1, and there's not all too much to this level, it being the first one and all, that shouldn't be all too surprising. Just gotta hop over some Goombas and Koopas, and this level is done in no time. Now before we move on, there are two quick things that you need to keep in mind when completing pretty much any level in this speedrun. For starters, you want to try and not end the level with the last two numbers in the time limit being the same. If you do, you'll get a longer ending animation as you'll get a bunch of fireworks, and although extra score is nice, wasting a few seconds in a speedrun isn't. And to only make matters worse, this will also cause a mushroom house to pop in at the start of a world, which only wastes even more time. And then secondly, whenever jumping towards a flagpole, you'll want to turn away from it before touching it. Now normally, if you grab the flagpole while facing it, Mario or Luigi will twirl around after getting to the bottom, and this of course wastes a bit of time. It's certainly not much time by itself, but these can definitely add up over the course of completing several levels throughout the run. Anyway, yeah, keep an eye out for those and you'll be golden. Next, 1-2 starts with Mario ground pounding into the level, and to save some time, you can actually cancel this ground pound by simply pressing up on the D-pad. Not doing this wastes a bit of time for Mario's ground pounding animation here, it's not a huge deal, but this is pretty easy to do, so might as well do it. Now if you're lucky enough, you'll get a flying red question block here, and if you're extra lucky, or if you've done some pretty crazy methods to manipulate the game's RNG, which unfortunately we won't go diving into in this video, this block will contain a blue shell. And the blue shell is basically the holy grail for most of this speedrun. Not only do you become almost invincible when spinning around in the shell form and gain extra horizontal speed when swimming underwater, but you also move much faster on land by jumping out of the shell and letting go of the run button for a quick second. Pretty much in general when speedrunning this game, when it's safe to do so, you'll want to be doing these shell exit jumps like this to keep maximum speed. Then later on in this level, we come across the second of these two seesaw log things, and if we stand on the left side for a while, we can tilt it enough to then be able to jump up to the top section here. And then after running to the end of the level and going up this pipe, we can actually reach a secret exit. And completing the level this way not only lets us skip over the next level, but it also unlocks this red mushroom house here, where if you weren't lucky enough to get a blue shell in one too, you can get one here with an easy little trick. Basically, if you just hold the run button and run to the right as soon as the roulette block starts changing, if you jump towards the bottom right corner of the block, you'll essentially guarantee yourself a blue shell every time. This only wastes a few seconds to get this if you don't have one already, and trust me, you'll need it. And even if you do already have one, if you're a noob like me, having a backup one is pretty ideal. Then next up, we visit the first tower level of this run, and for the most part, there aren't really many fast strats here as you're mostly at the mercy of the cycles of the platforms, so you kinda just have to take your time and make your way up. Eventually though, we reach this section where normally you'd take this pipe to blast on upwards, but instead we want to do a few wall kicks to make our way to this door here, and then once inside, there's actually a secret door here that we can reach on the right side of the screen. And here you'll absolutely need the blue shell as it's necessary to break through these blocks. And once they're out of the way, you can go through this pipe which leads to yet another secret exit. But this time around, the reward is even better as this unlocks this cannon here, which will blast us all the way to world 5. And yeah, just like that, we skip over three and a half of this game's worlds. Oh, and also, whenever offered the option of saving the game, always hit no, as actually saving the game will end up costing a few seconds that aren't worth it in this case. Anyways, 5-1 is a bit tricky as there are quite a few things that can mess you up here and make you lose the blue shell, which is still super important for us to keep. 
So although doing the shell exit jumps is certainly faster, and if you're good enough, do them by all means, but to keep things safer, I'd recommend just staying in shell form for basically the entirety of the stage, as this will let you cut through enemies and the snow with ease. And the exact same thing can be said for the next level that takes place underground again. There are just so many swooper and spike top enemies here that can mess you up that yeah, just cruise away with the blue shell, you just have to make a few semi-precise jumps and be careful to not bonk off the wrong thing. And following the pattern of most of the levels so far, we have yet another secret exit here that we want to get to by stopping about three quarters of the way through the level here, and then jumping up this green pipe with a piranha. And by taking this secret exit, we unlock this warp pipe, which lets us get the next tower level as we go right into World 5-3. Now I was unlucky to have this level start with a hammer broke here, but thankfully he wasn't too much of an issue, and then the rest of this level isn't all too bad with the blue shell as you pretty much just have to keep on jumping around the ice platforms. Then, towards the end of this level, we can once again see why the blue shell is so nice to keep around, as we can spin through these snailicorn enemies incredibly quickly and make them pretty much a non-issue. And yeah, just like that, that's another level done. Now next comes the one and only ghost house that we'll have to deal with in this speedrun. After climbing some stairs and avoiding a bunch of bruiser enemies, we can hit some hidden blocks here to reveal a secret vine, and this leads to a door which takes us to this elevator that's ooh, incredibly scary. You can't really do all too much here since the elevator is scripted, so you kinda just have to chill until it flies all the way up to the top, and then through this door is, you guessed it, yet another secret exit. And once again, this gets us another cannon, and wow, just like that, we're already in the final world of the game, World 8, which actually has more levels to go through than we've played through so far combined. And I'm sure you get the idea by now, and I'm starting to sound like a broken record, but staying invincible in the blue shell continues to be extremely helpful here at the start of World 8. There are just so many Krobers, Splunkins, Bullet Bills, and Boos here that it's a no-brainer to just spin through all of them. Then, at the end of the level, you jump over one final bonsai bill to get to the flagpole for another stage down. Now next up, 8-2 and 8-3 finally have us swimming for the first time of the speedrun, and starting with 8-2, we have to swim up after hitting this question mark switch which will raise the water level. The next area has a line of floating barrels that you can shell jump across, and then after raising the water here, you have to do the same thing back to reach the higher pipe up top here. To quickly get through this next room, you can simply just ground pound on the left side, and then after getting through this column of brick blocks, you can cancel the ground pound to gently fall down to the next pipe. And then, after baiting the two skeeters here to the right of this room, we can raise the water level one final time to reach this pipe at the top, which brings us finally to the end of the level. Now before we get to swim again, we have another tower level to get through, and much like the first tower we saw, this one too has us mostly at the mercy of the platform cycles on the way up. After getting pushed through this gap like a quarter in one of those push machines, we can wall kick our way up to this trampoline, which brings us to these lovely red doors that lead to our first actual battle against Bowser Jr. And here there's a nifty little speedrun trick that makes defeating him quick and easy. When the fight starts, you can't jump on him as he'll just hide in his shell, so instead you have to wait for him to throw a green shell at you, and then after grabbing and throwing it back, then his belly will be exposed for an attack. And then at this point, by ground pounding on him, jumping off to get maximum height, and then doing a short hop shortly after touching the ground, if everything is timed right, you can actually do enough damage to defeat him really quickly. Unfortunately, I didn't get this in my run here, but it's a really nifty trick to save some time. Next up, 8-3 has a swimming again, and it's actually more important to have the blue shell for this stage. Like you saw, I lost the power-up in the previous fight, but thankfully, I did have the backup from before. Here, after swimming up quickly and carefully to avoid hitting any of the Unagi, we come across a Mega Unagi, who will start chasing us for the last section of the stage, basically turning it into an auto-scroller. And like I mentioned near the start of the video, the blue shell also gives us the added bonus of much faster horizontal swim speed. So with this power up, we can swim through this level much faster than without it. Like we don't even need to bother hitting the pipe bubble jet boosts. Of course, you still have to be pretty careful to not get bopped by any of the oncoming cheap cheeps or unagi, but eventually you'll get to a green pipe here that leads to the end of the stage. Now World 8-4 is all about timing shell jumps if you want to get a decent time on it, and you'll want to sneak in as many shell exit jumps as you can. 
Now, I think this is definitely one of the more difficult levels of the run, as the tiniest of slips can either get you a nice date with one of the scuttlebugs, or you'll miss a jump, bonk, and just instantly die, pretty much killing the run. And this level is actually where we say goodbye to the blue shell. It's been a massive help so far, but from here, we actually don't need it, and in fact, you'll want to take a hit from the last scuttlebug in this level near the flagpole here. And now, onto World Aid Castle, which is definitely 100% the last level in the game. There's no way there could be anything after this, right? This level actually goes pretty quick in the speedrun. We only hit the first orange block here, and then run and jump off the different platforms as they come up. Then after quickly swinging off this rope, we can do a few short hops to get to another rope, and just like that, we get to the end of the level. Wow, that really wasn't that bad for a final level. Alright Bowser Jr., end of the line. Uh-oh, Dry Bowser? Surely this final boss fight will be difficult. Oh. And wait, there's more! Well, I guess we got a few more levels to go, so on to 8-5 it is, and since we no longer have the blue shell but still want to keep on moving and grooving through the levels, the next best thing is to grab a fire flower here and then just spam the fireballs to clear out as many enemies in front as possible, and in the meantime you just want to focus on quickly running and jumping through all the different platforms here. Yeah, there's not really much else to this level. Then for World 8-6, we get a cool warping mechanic where going off screen in either direction will warp you to the other side, and here the lava is rising from the bottom, so you guessed it, it's a vertical auto-scroller. On the way up, grab another Fire Flower to have as a backup, as it'll be really handy to have in a few levels here. Then once you get to the spin block platforms, if you jump between the gap here, the game will just push you up on top of it, and then similarly, if you do a wall kick off near the bottom of the right wall here, you can slip just between another gap to cheese your way onto this spin block, which will send you up to the last section here with a bunch of spinies. Now I found it important to not just spam the fireballs here, as since you're only allowed to have two of them on screen, since the level just warps around, your fireballs could be left bouncing for a while, leaving you defenseless. So yeah, I like to take some time to make my shots count here, as to not get hit by one of these fellas. But after getting to the top pipe here and getting blasted up, that's yet another level in the books. Now 8-7 is a bit tricky, especially when trying to keep the fire flower power up. We'll start things off by bouncing off this red paratroopa and then off the first of these two green ones to make it over this wall. Then we blast this thick sledge bro off the face of the earth, and then after making it through this section, we can then carefully take out these fire bros, and there's also a star in one of these blocks here that not only helps us with invincibility, but also lets us run incredibly fast. So while that's going, we can run all the way to the pipe here, which blasts us towards the end of the level. I unfortunately took a pair of regrettable hits here, but thankfully the red coins here gave me back another fire flower. And now for the last regular numbered level, World 8-8, this level is pretty luck based as the whole gimmick here is that magma rocks fall down from the sky, and they aren't always very predictable. Thankfully enough though, just like with the previous level, this one too has a star that can be a big help hidden in this area. And it's even more helpful here to be honest, as it helps us with dealing with all the enemies and falling rocks, and there's also way more ground for us to run with it to give us even more of that sweet, sweet star power speed boost. Now next of course, we have World 8 Tower 2, and here is the biggest reason we wanted to keep our Fire Flower ability. Thankfully, there is another extra one at the start of this level if you need, but it can be kind of risky to grab with the Moving Snake Block. Ah yes, the Moving Snake Block. This is the main gimmick of this level, and as you can see, it moves pretty slowly, which of course isn't great for speedrunning. As such, there's a trick in this level simply known as Death Warp that's super handy for saving some time. Basically, after getting through a bit of the level on the snake block, you come across this spiky section here. And instead of waiting for the snake block to slowly make its way through it all, You'll actually purposefully want to jump into the spike alley, run to the end, wall kick up, take another hit, and then all the way back at the other end if you wall kick and jump off at the right spot, you'll actually reach a checkpoint. Pretty much, as soon as you see the flag pop up, you're good to get bamboozled. And I'm sure you've clued in by now, but yes, running through this area, dying, and then restarting the level from the checkpoint is actually faster than doing the level normally. Go figure. 
Anyways, now death warped about halfway through the level, I opted to use my backup fire flower since after riding on the snake block for a while longer and dodging a handful of spike balls, we reach yet another Bowser Jr. fight, and although you can still do the quick kill strat I mentioned earlier, simply spamming a bunch of fireballs at the fella is just, well, simpler. And with that level down, it's on to the final stretch of the game, for real this time, as we enter Bowser's castle. After starting in a simple lava room, we enter this room where after getting another backup fire flower just to be safe, we can ground pound this block to reveal a switch that will actually rotate the whole area, and we'll see this mechanic a few times in this level. And just like with the towers before, here in this maze area we're at the mercy of some more cycles, this time though with these burners. And yeah, there's a bit of a maze here, but if you know to take the path up here and then back down to the right door here, it's pretty straightforward. In this next room, to save a bit of time, you can damage boost through this thwomp to get on top of these blocks here to ground pound another switch below you to rotate the level again to get to the next door. And this leads to another maze room, but this one's even more straightforward as you just have to take the lower path to the left here, and then jump up here and slide under the burner to get to this door that takes us to another maze area where we can jump past a few thwomps, and then after getting down and regaining a fire flower here, there's a final switch for us to rotate the level for a last time. And then after jumping back up and sliding back down to this door, we get to another type of puzzle room. As a throwback to the first Super Mario Bros. game, here you have to go through a certain section of an area in order to proceed, otherwise the room will just keep looping forever. But to make things easier here, the game actually gives you sound cues as to whether you take the correct path or not. And even so, it's always the same order, so you just have to take the bottom path first, then the top path, and then finally the middle path here. And by doing all of those correctly, we finally make it to these large, foreboding red doors. And of course, going through these doors takes us to the final boss fight where Bowser Jr. resuscitates the big boss himself in this cauldron. Now surely this final boss fight will be more difficult than- oh. Okay, I did get pretty lucky there as that jump is quite precise to make, but even if you don't get a high jump off Bowser Jr. at the start to make it over Bowser, if you still have the Fire Flower power-up for a final fight, this fight is still pretty easy. But yeah, as soon as we hit that switch, that is time for the speedrun, and Peach is finally free from being dragged around by Bowser Jr., and Mario finally gets his kiss. Now, as a beginner of speedrunning this game, I didn't get any sort of time that's worthy of writing home about, but with similar strats for the most part to the ones I've shown here, currently the world record on real hardware is held by Josh TGR, where with some incredibly slick movement, a time of only 22 minutes and 11 seconds was reached in June of 2023. And with Josh touting this as a soon-to-be former world record, and the current top three times all being achieved within the last year, looks like there could be some exciting times ahead for the world record of this speedrun category. Anyways, that's speedrunning New Super Mario Bros. any percent, and I hope you enjoyed. If you did, check out some of my other speedrunning videos, and be sure to subscribe to find your way back here in the future. Also a big shout out to Glitch and Yipley from the new Super Mario Bros. speedrunning Discord for helping me out, especially Yipley for making an awesome tutorial series for speedrunning this game. If you'd like to get a more in-depth guide on how to run this game, definitely check it out, I'll have it linked for you in the description. And as always, thank you all so much for stopping by today, and I will see you in a bit.